The Butterfly Palace is a must-see place when you go to Branson. It's a place where they have thousands of butterflies from all over the world. And you have a chance to go up and they give these little tubes full of sweet. Nectar. Mm -hmm. Nectar, and you hold it up and the butterflies come and you can actually feed them. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It is. Let's show them what it's like. We'll have to go through our work area here. So We have shipments on the counter that we're processing. We're not allowed to have anyone in here that's not authorized in here. So this, this shipment we received today, we received 29 different species, 528 individuals, um, and we had butterflies coming to us from both Asia and South America. Last week, we had Asia, South America, and Africa coming to us. So, multiple species. Wonderful. Look at those. So, yeah, we've got two different species here. Two different things going on. You can see on this side, those are trying to camouflage. Those are a thoas swallowtail, trying to camouflage with uh, their environment. Whereas these here, this is a tiger glassy wing, and they're bright. This is a warning color. They're trying to say, hey, I don't taste good. Stay away from me. So Beautiful. that's that's an aposomatic coloration. That's amazing. They look absolutely metallic, don't they? So can you see the wings in there? Oh, yeah. So right in here, right along this side, you can see that wing there. And if it'll rotate, I don't know if I'll be able to rotate it. This line down the center is the proboscis. Right here on either side are the eyes. And then here are the abdominal segments right in there. So the first thing to, to pop open on this chrysalis when this butterfly emerges is this, this where this proboscis is. I call it the mask. And it'll pop open, and then that butterfly will crawl out of the chrysalis and hang upside down and dry those wings. That is so neat. So how do you get this from the caterpillar? So these are all shipped to us. I mean, but in, in life. Okay. So the, the first stage is going to be the egg. And uh, this right here is the blue morpho. Oh, yeah. So the blue morpho, for example, that, uh, that, that mother butterfly, that female butterfly is going to lay her eggs. Those eggs can remain in that stage for about 7 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. That caterpillar will hatch. And a lot of times the very first meal is uh, that egg. They'll eat that egg. And then that, that butterfly laid her eggs on a host plant. And for the morphos, they have several different host plants, um, and a lot of them are legumes. Uh, there, there are a lot of foreign plants that we don't have here in the United States, but um, that caterpillar will then eat on that plant. That caterpillar goes through stages called instars. It's kind of molting stages. Each stage can last seven to 10 days uh, for a total of 40 days as a caterpillar. Wow. And then that caterpillar will molt that last time and create this chrysalis. And when this chrysalis is created, it takes about 10 to 14 days in this stage before the butterfly emerges. And depending on species, some species can live, like this morpho we've had, some live three to five months long. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some of these other species we fly only live a day or two. So on average, butterflies live about two to three weeks. The morphos are how long? About We've had some live three to five months long. Yeah. We've done some mark and recapture studies here to see. That is amazing. Yeah. It's thrilling. Yeah. So I wanted to start here. And then you see here we've got a freshly emerged butterfly. Oh, wow. So these wings are very, very floppy. Those wings still haven't become rigid yet. And what this butterfly does is it'll pump a fluid into the veins of those wings. When, uh, when that fluid is expelled, some of it remains in those veins and causes them to be rigid. When you break a butterfly's wing, it will not repair itself. That's it. That's over. Yeah. Is this a blue morpho? This is actually a species called a malachite. You can see them wiggling around on the chrysalis, too. Well, as I did that. <laughs> so, of course, they want to they're living. Then, as, as another defense strategy, these have spikes on them. I was going to say, and then at the top there. Yeah, yeah. And I've actually had some of those poke me and draw blood. Really? Yeah. Really? So, here, all of, all of these are from... South America or Costa Rica. These that she just passed over here, this is a paper kite. This one comes to us from Asia. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's a bright yellow. Another another warning color there. And you can see all of these are spent. The butterflies have emerged out of this. That's the last one. 
Uh, yeah. So another warning color with this butterfly, this butterfly being bright white coming from that yellow chrysalis is saying, hey, I don't taste good. Stay away from me. Hmm. Distasteful trait. Yeah. And then we've got this one here. This is a Shiraxis. This comes to us from Africa. So you can see. So has he just come out? Yeah, yeah. So these butterflies create their chrysalis wherever they're from. These morphos being in Costa Rica, create that chrysalis in Costa Rica. And by the time they're shipped to us, it's almost a week. It's not quite a week. They will emerge. So they go into the chrysalis in Costa Rica and emerge here in Branson, Missouri. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Crazy. So. Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Wow, Matt is amazing, isn't he? I don't think I've ever seen anyone that knows as much about insects, especially butterflies, and loves them more. We, we can't leave it here, though. Matt then took us through the doors into the large hall where the but butterflies actually live. And I, I want to go in there. I want you to notice, though, as we go in, we have to go through a chamber and be screened to make sure that we don't take any insects in and we don't bring any butterflies out into the environment. So would you like to go inside? And be sure to pay attention to Blue Morpho. It's very beautiful. We've got some butterflies that feed from nectar, and then we've got other butterflies that only feed from rotting fruit. So two different, two different types of butterflies there. And these long wings typically like to feed from nectar. They'll actually ingest a bit of pollen when they're feeding from flowers, and that pollen helps lengthen their lives. And we have some long wings in here that can live up to nine months long. Good. So yeah, yeah. You can see here that we have some owls and the blue morpho just flew away, but uh -huh. some owls and the blue morphos specifically like to feed off of rotting fruit. We've got some rotting, rotting fruit here. And you'll notice these, these are owls. And when you, when you open up that wing or when that wing's open um, and you're looking at that underside, it looks just like the face of an owl. And those Ooh. eye spots or ocelli are there to scare off predators. If you, if you look at it, it looks like a big eye and those, those predators will look at that and think, holy cow, that's a, that's a big, <laughs> big animal. They're also brown. So in the rainforest, amongst all that brown and green, they're gonna blend right in with their environment. So they're utilizing camouflage. And then you've got butterflies here that wanna stand out. <laughs> they wanna stand out and say, hey, I don't, I don't taste good. Those morphos are neat because their wings are blue, but it's not the blue pigment. It's the structure of the scales reflecting blue light. That's and that's, right. that's what makes them blue, yes. There you there go. go. Yeah. And you can see, in, think of them in the rainforest, if they were flying, they, they have a really kind of sporadic flight pattern. They don't ever fly in a straight line. So in the rainforest, when they close those wings, they're gonna disappear. And then when they open them up, they're in a completely different spot. So it makes it really hard for predators to zone in on them and, and find them. And when they're sitting still with those wings closed, they're gonna blend in completely with their environment. Or hopefully those eye spots are gonna scare away any predators. And when they open them, they're so bright. Is that to attract another one? It or? could be. It could be. There's sure some beautiful. research going on on uh, different uh, reproductive strategies and things mm -hmm. like that with, with the coloration. We've got butterflies in here that exhibit sexual dimorphisms, which is a, a difference in male and female. So the females look completely different than the males. There's a butterfly flying right here. It's called the melee cruiser, and that's the female. The male is uh, is bright orange and they're they're flying all over in here but um there we, go. <laughs> we fly uh almost 1500 butterflies at a time in here uh, are there more in the m earlier day than there are later days so yeah like so there weren't as many out some yesterday. butterflies are uh, referred to as crepuscular like those owls that you see feeding mm -hmm. right there they're going to fly at dawn and dusk so they're more active early in the oh. morning and later in the evening and then other butterflies will fly throughout the day Whereas you have moths that are primarily nocturnal. Now they're not all nocturnal, uh, but most moths do fly at night. Uh, and the difference between a butterfly and a moth uh, is, I, I tell everyone to go and look at the antenna. Uh, mm -hmm. Butterflies, for the most part, have a clubbed antenna. So at the end of that antenna, it looks like they're clubbed. 
moths very moths may have needle like antenna or filiform very fuzzy antenna uh, it just varies a lot of people think well look at look at a moth they always sit with their wings open well sometimes butterflies do too you know so that's not always the, the sure way yeah. to tell is there anything that uh, kids can do to uh, know where to find a chrysalis in the wild and yeah so and how the, would they take care of it yeah the chrysalis is difficult but what I always tell everyone is if you have a butterfly you like, a butterfly that's found in, 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 in your hometown, look up its host plant and then go out and look for its host plant because there at their host plant you will find the caterpillars. And when you find the caterpillars, you sometimes can find the chrysalis. Now like the monarch, the monarch's not gonna create a chrysalis on milkweed. That, that caterpillar is gonna move off and try to find somewhere away from that milkweed to create that chrysalis um, because uh, predators can you can find them if they if they just pupate on the milkweed so so uh, if someone actually wanted to experience this would it be a good idea to look for a caterpillar but then you'd have to have the plant for it to eat I, I always tell them to if you want to see them just plant the plants plant plant, plant the plant yeah what plant the host idea. plants plant the host plants and that way you can attract those butterflies but when you're trying to attract those butterflies you also have to feed them so you want to plant a lot of nectar plants. And I always suggest look, looking up native plants for your area uh, because that's going to vary state to state. Um, mm -hmm. But as long as you plant those host plants and plant those nectar plants, uh, you will bring those butterflies you in. Get them. Yep, and so, you will be able to watch that. I noticed you have a plant outside called a butterfly plant. Yeah, good one. That, yeah. Is that a good one? It's a good nectar plant. Smell good. Good yeah. nectar plant. Um, we have milkweed outside. Mm -hmm. So for the Missouri area, I would recommend coneflower black-eyed susan those are all great nectar plants um and then everyone wants to see the mil uh the monarch so plant milkweed get yeah. get native milkweed out there and uh you'll monarch. be able to bring those monarchs in but i always recommend people talk to conservation departments and get the get native plants so if if the butterflies are in here why wouldn't they lay eggs in here we don't have find the plants yeah, we don't have any other host plants that's the secret. <laughs> that's, yes. Because so otherwise they would. Like yeah, crazy, yeah. They? Yeah, so I've got a list of all the butterflies the USDA allows us to bring in here, allows us to import. And with that, we have created a list of all of the host plants. Some butterflies have multiple host plants, and um, we're not allowed to have any of those. <laughs> you want to release one? Oh, yeah, how here. fun. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful one, too. Yeah, this is, this is the paper kite. This is Idea Lua So what do I do? You take this cup and hold it up and turn it upside down and kind of give it a shake. There you go. Wow. Beautiful. So is that that butterfly's first fly? Yes, yes. So you, you helped it take its very first fly. Yeah. And so what's it called? It's a paper kite or a rice paper. paper, sometimes they call them, but the paper scientific kite. name is Idea Lua Cano. I like paper kite. Yep, a lot easier to remember. A lot easier to remember. How fun.